This year, Extreme Flight has been pretty busy introducing many new models to their lineup, and still, I think their new 67-inch Extra 260 receiver ready is probably their most interesting release, as it represents a significant shift for the company going beyond the traditional, almost ready-to-fly model, and offering a plane that's almost good to go right out of the box. Initial reviews have been stellar, but are those reports legit, or is this an overhyped plane behind a good marketing job? Let's find out! In case there are any doubts, this is in no way sponsored by Extreme Flight. I personally ordered the receiver ready version on the day it became available on their website. I was searching for a reliable electric plane for those lazy days when I did not want to take out my larger gas airplane, especially one large enough to handle windy conditions. I wanted to stick with a 6 cell battery setup for its simplicity and cost effectiveness. Additionally, I was very curious and a bit skeptical about the quality of the included equipment and the assembly. So, what comes in the box, and what do you need to do to get this plane in the air? For the receiver ready version, you just need to add a receiver and a battery pack. The plane comes almost completely assembled out of the box. Wings come with servos, arms and linkages fully installed. Elevator and rudder servos are also installed in the fuselage, and their arms and linkages are installed in their horns, and just need to be connected to the servos. Propeller, motor and ESC are already in place. Rudder and elevator servo extensions are ready to be connected to the receiver. Even the battery velcros are set up from the factory. Only a handful of steps have been left for you to do. You'll need to glue the horizontal stabilizer. I was not looking forward to this step, but the fit was so good that my fears of messing up the alignment vanished pretty quickly. Push the stabs as forward as possible. Add a few drops of thin CA and you're good to go. Then glue the plug to cover the gap behind the stabilizer. Next, the rudder is installed by lining up the hinges and feeding the wire through them. After that, the only remaining work is to bolt the landing gear and tailwheel. That's it. Or that should have been it. In my particular case, I encountered two problems related to quality control. Before starting my assembly, I had seen multiple reports of problems with the ESC mount. When I inspected my unit, the ESC mount was not properly glued, which meant I had to remove spinner, propeller and cowling to fix it. The second issue was another lack of glue, this time on the canopy. Despite the additional work required to fix those issues, the total assembly time of this plane was about an hour. Apart from that, the airframe itself has the high quality we're used to seeing in other current Extreme Flight models, including a beautiful covering job and the quick release system in the wings which make field assembly a breeze. Alright, the plane is quick to put together, but how is the quality of the equipment? Let's start with the T-Motor power system. The kit includes an AM670 motor paired with an AM116 ESC and a beautiful 18x8 carbon fiber propeller. If I had to use a single word to describe the performance of this power system in the Extra 260 is ballistic. It is really a bit ridiculous. I pretty much never use full power, regardless of what I'm doing. It is so powerful, I would love to try this power system in a larger airframe. The 70 inch Sleek or Extra could be interesting candidates for it. The receiver ready kit comes with Theta 989 high voltage mini brassless servos. On paper, they have better specs than competitors like the MKS HV747 or the Savox SV1261MG at a similar price of about $90. This is my first experience with Theta servos, and so far the results have been pretty positive. They are fast, no signs of blowback, and centering is good. They are also surprisingly quiet. I have about 30 flights on them, so we'll have to wait and see how they perform long term, but so far so good. Apart from the receiver, the other item needed in the receiver ready version is a battery pack. In my case, I'm using SMC high voltage 4400 mAh packs and get about 5 minutes with 30% battery left. I've also tested a 6200 mAh pack that I had from another plane, and the performance is equally good. The plane is so light and the motor has so much power that the extra battery weight is unnoticeable to me but you can get an extra 2 minutes of flight time with it, for a total of 7 minutes of flight time. Regarding center of gravity, with the smaller pack, I place it as forward as possible in the supplied velcro strip, and the plane will need a bit of down elevator to remain in horizontal inverted flight. Just how I like it. When flying with the bigger battery, I place it center in the velcro strip to get a similar feel. Now, how does the plane actually fly? Let's see. My 120cc Extreme Flight Sleek is the plane I fly the most by far. It's not a perfect plane, but overall, I really, really like it. It's probably not fair to the little 67-inch extra, 
but the Sleek is my best reference when evaluating the flight dynamics of any new aerobatic plane I get to play with. Having said that, after just a few maneuvers during the Maiden, it was clear that the 67-inch extra wasn't going to disappoint. Somehow, it feels like a bigger plane. I usually don't enjoy flying small electric aerobatic planes that much. They get blown by the wind easily. They struggle at precision and don't have enough inertia to properly execute some maneuvers like snap rolls, knife spins or crankshafts. Their roll rate also tends to drastically change with small variations on airspeed. But this plane doesn't seem to have any of those problems. Knife edge spins are solid. They are probably easier to do here than with my Sleek. Crankshafts are plenty aggressive. Precision aerobatics are very good and the roll rate is fairly consistent. Flying it in windy days is still pretty fun. The Extra has a lot of tail authority, perfect for maneuvers like walls and vortices. That's not surprising for a modern extreme flight airframe. What's more interesting is that this great tail authority doesn't come with the typical large inertia on pitch that causes the pilot to overshoot certain maneuvers. For comparison, my biggest leak required a learning process to predict how much the tail would over-rotate after neutralizing the elevator. The Extra behaves much better here in my opinion. In most planes, I usually don't make use of the included set force generators. They are one more thing to worry about during the field assembly, and they usually reduce the plane's roll rate and make some maneuvers like harrier circles or funnel hovers harder. In this plane, however, I've been using the set force generators on most of my flights. The thumb screws can stay permanently in the wing, thanks to the slots in the removable surfaces, so installation is pretty quick. The plane's roll rate is plenty fast even with the set force generators, and rather authority is very good so I haven't really noticed any downsides to using them, but the plane feels a bit more solid in precision maneuvers with them on. Overall, this extra performs surprisingly well both low and slow and extreme aerobatics. Positive and inverted harriers are very stable, especially with the side force generators on. Knife edge requires little rudder and presents minimal coupling. With this power system, the plane hovers at around 50% throttle. Despite the extreme amount of extra power, I haven't felt a need to set up any kind of throttle curve and the ESC still has the original factory settings. Let's talk pricing. The almost ready to fly version is $499, which seems pretty standard for this type of airplane. As a reference, a Pilot RC 67 inch extra has the same price tag. The receiver ready version that I'm reviewing here is $1200. When putting together a cart with the almost ready to fly airframe plus the equipment included in the receiver ready kit, the final cost is pretty much the same. So unless you already have the equipment or want to buy servos or a motor from different brand, I think the receiver ready is the way to go. In conclusion, I really like the concept of getting the biggest possible plane with a 6 cell LiPo for simplicity. And on top of it, this particular model makes you feel like you're flying something even larger than it is. After about 30 flights, I've been extremely happy with this setup. Except for demo flights at the events, where a bigger plane tends to catch more eyes, the 67-inch Extra 260 has become my weapon of choice. 